Parables of Prudence A large and a small piece of meat. The young wife was preparing her first family dinner in her life. She cut a small piece from a large piece of meat and cooked it separately in a small saucepan, and put a large piece of meat to stew in a large cauldron. The surprised husband asked her why she did that. I don't know, she replied. I saw that my mom always did that, so I did too. But the young husband became interested. And he waited for Sunday lunch at his mother-in-law's, asked her. And why do you cut off a small piece of meat from a large piece and stew it separately? The mother-in-law shrugged her shoulders. I somehow didn't think about it. My mom always did that. Well, so did I. The newlyweds and mother-in-law went to visit their grandmother, who lived outside the city and asked her the same question. Hmm, somehow I didn't think about it. I do this because my mother always cut a small piece of meat from a large piece and stewed it separately. So, there is also a great-grandmother. But if her answer is the same, then the history of the tradition will remain a mystery forever. The newlyweds, the mother-in-law, the grandmother, all came to the great-grandmother, and since she was completely deaf, they had to shout in her ear for a long time. Great-grandmother asked again. Eh? What? And she couldn't figure out what was required of her. Why? All three women shouted. Why did you always cut off a small piece of meat from a large piece and stew it separately? Why? Oh, what are you talking about? The great grandmother finally realized. Because I didn't have the money to buy a big pot. And mine wasn't big enough and the whole piece of meat couldn't fit in it. Three sieves. One man asked Socrates, Do you know what your friend told me about you? Wait, Socrates stopped him. First sift through what you are going to say, after three sieves. Three sieves, before you say anything, you need to sift it three times. First through a sieve of truth. Are you sure this is true? No, I just heard it. So you don't know if it's true or not. Then we will sift through the second sieve, a sieve of kindness. Do you want to say something nice about my friend? No, on the contrary. So, Socrates continued, you're going to say something bad about him, but you're not even sure it's true. Let's try the third sieve a sieve of benefit. Is it really necessary for me to hear what you want to tell? No, that's not necessary. So, Socrates concluded, There is no truth, no kindness, no benefit in what you want to say. Then why talk? A dream. One Eastern ruler had a terrible dream. In his dream, he saw all his teeth fall out one by one. Greatly disturbed by this, he called his dream interpreter. He listened very attentively to the governor's story and said, My lord, I have to tell you bad news. Just as you have lost all your teeth, you will lose one by one all your loved ones. This interpretation angered the ruler. The dream interpreter, unable to say anything good, was thrown into prison. Then the king called another dream interpreter. The latter, after listening to the story of the dream, said, My lord, I have good news for you. You will live longer than other members of your family. You'll outlive them all. The king was delighted and generously rewarded the interpreter for these words. The courtiers were amazed. Your words were almost no different from the words of your predecessor. So why was he punished and you got the reward? They asked. The lucky dream interpreter replied to this, You are right. We both interpreted the dream in the same way. 
But it's not just about what to say, but also how to say it. 2 Angels Once upon a time two angels traveled the earth. An old and a young one. One evening, tired and exhausted, they asked to spend the night in the house of a rich man. He let the wanderers in. But being a stingy and inhospitable person, he provided them with overnight accommodation in a barn. It was cold, dark, and damp. Despite his fatigue, the young angel could not sleep for a long time. And when he finally managed to fall asleep, he was suddenly awakened by a noise. When he woke up, he saw that the old angel was diligently sealing a hole in the wall. The young angel was surprised. He several times offered the old one to quit this business and try to rest before the upcoming journey, but received a stubborn refusal. In the morning, the young angel, not hiding his curiosity, asked the old one, Why did you help this man? Because he treated us so badly. Not everything is what it seems, his companion replied. The next evening, looking for a place to sleep, the travelers stopped at the house of a poor man. The owner welcomed them cordially, shared his dinner and even provided the only bed in the house, and he and his wife went to the barn. In the morning, the angels were awakened by the cry of the owner and the crying of his wife. It turned out that their cow died that night the only nurse and hope of the family. The young angel, feeling extreme surprise, turned to the old one. Why don't you help the poor man? He said. Last time you helped someone who treated us so badly. And this time you are inactive when it is in your power to save this family? To which the old angel replied, not everything is what it seems. Continuing the journey, the young angel did not let up in any way. He reproached the old angel, accused him and could not accept what had happened. Not everything is what it seems. The old angel replied for the third time. Last night, when we were in the house of a rich man, I saw a treasure in the wall of the barn and walled it up so that it would not get to the owner of the house. And that night death came for the poor man's wife, and I bought her off by giving her the cow. Moisha is a fool. The new teacher, coming to class, found that one boy was being teased by Moisha the fool. At recess, he asked the guys why they called him that. Yes, he really is a fool, Mr. Teacher. If you give him a large coin of five shekels and a small one of ten, he will choose five because he thinks it is bigger. Here, look, the guy takes out two coins and offers Moishi to choose. He as always chooses five. The teacher asks with surprise, why did you choose a five shekel coin instead of ten? Look, it's bigger, Mr. Teacher. After the lessons, the teacher approached Moisha. Don't you understand that five shekels are bigger only in size, but ten shekels can buy more? Of course I understand, Mr. Teacher. So why do you choose five? Because if I choose ten, they will stop giving me money.